Are you looking to dive into a brand new adventure? Well, before you do, come take a seat, grab a drink, and let me tell you about my experience playing 100 hours of Soul Mask. Soul Mask is a game I picked up earlier this year. At the time, there was little about it online, but I was extremely excited to start up a brand new open world adventure. Developed by Campfire Studios, this Aztec tribal survival game throws you into a sandboxed world with nothing to your name but the mysterious mask you awaken with. Upon picking up this ancient artifact, you are blessed by the mask and given mysterious powers you must strengthen once thrown into the unrelenting jungle below. Once you've picked your mask class, being healer, DPS or archer, you start in the thick of the jungle, doing your classical survival starting mechanics of picking up sticks, rocks and plant fibers to build yourself your first set of tools to tackle the jungle with. As well as this, you'll be looking for green crystals to upgrade your mass tech, allowing you to brainwash rowdy tribes and take them as your own tribe mates back at your bonfire. This mechanic will especially be important when it comes to unlocking Solmas Fog of War, as you will have to find scouts in the wilderness to mind control and take their knowledge to unlock more sections of the map. Bouncing back to the followers though, yes, this game allows you to have human followers that help you complete tasks around the base and out in the world. The tribesmen are extremely intricate in this game though, they can come across in different qualities represented by the colour of the diamonds they have next to their name, and they can specialise in lots of different types of skills as well as having special attributes. It might be best to equip certain followers with different weapon types to deal more damage or make them work on certain stations as they will be more efficient on those with a higher level skill. There is a ton to this system which is really cool to play around with in game. As well as that, let's talk mounts. The world is huge, so it only makes sense to have something to help you cover the distance. My first experience finding out this was a thing was rocking up into a primitive tribal camp and finding a small holding with the baby alpacas housed inside. It was so cute! And to my surprise, you could pick up these little fellas and take them home to raise to become your trusty steed. You can also tame llamas to use as a mount that allow you to carry sleepy tribesmen on the back of their saddles as well as being able to take more different baby animals and put them in the baskets if you make that certain saddle attachment. And something even cooler later game is the ability to tame panthers. I'll let you figure out the secrets to taming those derpy little dudes though, because it is an insanely cool mechanic that I haven't really seen in many other games. Once you've gotten yourself a mount though, you will have access to travelling great distances around the world, which will allow you to explore the multitude of different biomes this game has to offer. It works very similar to how Canon Exiles functions, with the higher up the map you go, the harder it gets. Explore desert, snow, jungle, bog, highlands, and even a redwood forest. This game is huge, it will take you a good bit to explore it all. And it's not boring to explore it either, as there's plenty of landmarks and things to find around the world, which is definitely a key enjoyment point for me. Now we've talked a lot of positives so far, but with all fair reviews we have to cover the pain points too. One of these will be extremely obvious from the start of the game. I will say it's improved greatly since January to now in April whilst I've been playing the closed playtest, but one of the biggest problems in Soul Mask is movement. Movement is janky! Whether that is running, gathering or combat, your character has jagged movements for most activities, Naruto Rama dual blades, enemies using very sudden and strange AI patterns, all sorts. I will say though, this is something I could easily overlook from my fair share of juddery games. That and the general hook of Soul Mask got me good enough to keep exploring and having fun, which is the most important part if you ask me. There is also issues with sound effects, I hope these would be ironed out before launch, but we will have to sit tight on those. This game can also get incredibly difficult. Ever been picked up by an oversized gorilla and used as a human towel whip? Well, in Soul Mask, you can. Early game is fine, you can get on greatly as a solo player, but I definitely 
don't recommend this game as a solo when it comes to late to mid gameplay. Me and my group found the ideal number for explorations being a minimum group of three, and this has not changed in the slightest throughout my entire time playing Soul Mask. This is because creatures such as filthy barbets, wild cats, wild dogs, and even giant oversized pigeons, mm, harpies, can do a lot of damage and be relentless, especially the higher level tribal camps can be especially ruthless. Having those extra players to help revive you or put down a campfire to respawn at can save you a ton of trouble. The desert being especially spicy with effects of radiation damage and more. I know we always had great difficulty with tribe leaders doing tons of damage, being hard to parry or stun, etc. So that is definitely a pain point for me and my mates. Not to say I don't enjoy the challenge, because for some of those things it was kind of fun running back and forth, but after a while it does get a little tiresome having to just keep doing that running back and forth thing and not getting anywhere with it, and sometimes not even being able to accomplish what we wanted to. One other thing I will critique is the technology tree. There is quite a lot of bloat in there, and this can negatively affect your general crafting menu after unlocking a few things as you will have a needle in the haystack situation and will need to make good use of the search bar to find the things you need to craft. That being said though, the descriptions on items are pretty good and will tell you what stations you need to craft certain items. And, oh yes, stations. Oh gosh, here we go again. There's a lot of them and I mean a lot. Make sure you build a big base because I guarantee you that you will need to expand again every time because of how many stations there are in this game. Sliding over to the building mechanics though, I got on with these pretty well. I don't mind the building system at all in Soul Mask. It does take getting used to the funky key selection to get other pieces to build with, such as switching walls to windows to door frames, etc. Make sure you make space for a bonfire in the middle of your base because similar to Rust's tool cabinet function, without a fueled bonfire in your base, it will begin to decay. And you also have a selection of area you can build in within your bonfire that things will not decay in. So make sure to keep your bonfire topped up regularly to be able to stick around in game. One thing I don't like with the building system though is all your parts start off with barely any health. And that's just weirdly inconvenient for me. I guess this was a PvP function though, so it's just another thing that's slightly annoying, but it's alright. But yeah, the system's pretty solid. I mean, it's pretty much basic building system as any other survival game. So if you like that type of thing, then you could definitely get this to work here. PvP is also not the only combat engagements you can get in Soul Mask. There are PvE options too. Such as you can get raided by tribesmen. They will purge your base and try and get to your bonfire. Use traps and your own tribesmen to get rid of these threats. All of these things being said though, let's get to some of my thoughts and feelings about the game itself. Overall, throughout my 100 hours of gameplay, I'm excited for the game's future. Despite its clunky nature, me and my friends had an amazing time playing Soul Mask. There was so much to explore, we wanted to play it every night and find out more about the game. We're looking very forward to jumping back into the game in its early access release. We had a great time exploring how tribemen systems worked, figuring out the mounts we could tame around the world, which, little secret, there'd be a snow leopard in there. And because of the jank, we had some hilarious gamer moments in there, because, you know, it's funny when you get some broken game bits and just funny things happen. The game just kept on giving. We played hours and hours of the beta version, and there was still so much to explore. So the game definitely provides its money worth, that is for sure. From mounts to pets to talking parrots that insult your neighbours, let me know what you think about this game in the comments down below. Are you diving into the jungle or kicking the loincloth? In very positive news, the devs seem quite open to feedback and have been working a ton on their game in the past few months to bring it up to par with the community's requests. Lots of patching and development updates, which is always great to see. I think they have a long road ahead of them, but I'm hoping that they have a great time with the game and make it something really special out there for survivalists all around the world. 
For now, I think it is a very solid start into the survival genre and definitely delivers on many favourite points that people enjoy in other survival games. So definitely keep an eye on this and I will let you know much much more in this space when the game comes out. And to make sure you don't miss that, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll be able to see those videos and guides when it comes to the full release out on Steam. But either way, that's all from me today. Thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.